Parenting types. Teens who grow up without either parent the abandonment can permanently alter the structure of the brain, and those who grow up with one parent are more likely to develop emotional distress. This kind of abandonment often formalizes into aggression, lack of empathy, or resentment. Whereas they may resent a parent and exhibit feelings of lack of concern about debt, school, further education, or even work obligations. In which, they may overlook those events and times with some form of exaggeration. Even though it isn't acceptable or productive to be outwardly angry, aggressive anger can make teens more susceptible to dominating with foolish intent or easily influenced by foolishness. Afterward, they may become a rebellious teen who's against authority figures, elders, parents, or police. Okay, this shows signs of bad behavior, the excessive things teens do often get perceived as positive when they were negative or vice versa. The teen who lacks a father, mother, or both will need supportive people in their life to overcome challenges. Moving forward, if you were raised without a father, you may want to control the anger and aggressive behavior. If you were raised without a mother, you may want to control the anger, aggressive, delinquent, hyperactive, and rebellious behavior. Or, if you were raised without either parent you may want to control all negative behavior. Once you have experienced and learned from any trial test story, remember to give God the glory as your testimony. Authoritative parents. Authoritarian parents govern their kids and home life according to obedience, political and religious principles, and even subjection. Whether at home or work, they act on those authoritative concepts by exercising complete control over the will of others, with absolute favoritism of obedience and submission to one's authority as opposed to individuality. They often are oppressive and strict with an attitude towards subordinates. An authoritative parent is considered a superego, controlling a weak ego that is unable to cope or identify with strong impulses. If an authoritative parent isn't submissive, they can become an ungrateful person to live with, when they don't and won't submit to God. Sometimes it may not appear accurate and fair when parents dominate and rule their child's future because they be wanting to live vicariously through them. The individual sabotage for a child may result in a lack of empathy with no willpower. Due to the aggressive tendencies, they experience from an adult, exaggeration may also be commonly expressed with insignificant concerns or even power trips. We don't need to pretend the biological parental status hasn't lost its vibe, you can see this immensely in the rise of teens being adopted. Once an authoritarian parent isn't a submissive person, they pass lawlessness down to their kids. This teaches them to avoid submitting to others because they ought to submit to you first. Or don't submit to others, make others submit to you. Sure, this type of rebellion hinders kids' growth going into adulthood. Because to keep a job or long-term housing you need to be able to make mutual agreements and prove loyalty to the boss, to keep the communications open. So, parents avoid favoring authoritative concepts without being submissive to God, and you must be submissive for others to value submitting to you. Grooming for sex parents. Grooming for sex parents also acts upon authoritative concepts and principles, with absolute favoritism toward obedience and submission for one's authority. This kind of parent is unsubmissive to everyone, other than the spouse. The parent stares intensely while bathing, dressing, and tending to a child as though they are preparing them for future random partners. They perform those repeated steps as part of a ritual, and may sexually fondle touch, or form molestation surrounding the child's life by molesting another child in front of them. They may even consume alcohol or drugs before or after to dehumanize. The parent will continuously dehumanize throughout the day, by calling home while at work when the child is there. Also, the child may not be allowed to have close friends, for fear of someone finding out and reporting them to the police. As a result, the parent may not even allow the child or children to leave the house for anything other than church or school. Okay, this shows signs of isolation, when a child or children isn't able to socialize with others their age. Grooming for sex predators. Predators get to know and watch their victims according to how vulnerable and weak they appear, and whether or not the child's been introduced to sex. Most predators groom the parents first by pretending to want to gain their trust. Although this is a start to the predator building sex barrier struggles around the child's life, all too often the child or parents are unaware of it. The predator draws the child in with persuasion through their emotional needs such as affection, attention, food, gifts, housing, money, or even transportation to take on more roles. They then use other distractions such as telling the child their parent or parents doesn't care about them if he or she doesn't give them what they need or want. Or they may tell them their parent or parents never wanted them anyway. Once the predator has already formed fewer needs for parental attention, and the predator has established his or her roles, they then introduce secrecy as a barrier to distance the child from their parents. This may involve giving the child access to do things the parents would not approve such as alcohol and illegal drugs. They may even grant or limit freedom the predator now dictates. Predators of this type generally maintain control using those emotional needs, guilt, isolation, threats, or vulnerability. They may even distress victims themselves to prove their control, laying the blame for the parent or parents allowing such things to happen. Or with continuous alterations or alternations in various areas of the child's life, 
to pretend nothing has happened and all is well. Grooming stages may last weeks or even years depending on the timing of physical contact and whether or not the predators can avoid adult interruptions. Slave-driven parents. Slave-driven parents also act upon authoritative concepts and principles, with absolute favoritism of obedience and submission to one's authority. The parent or parents are unsubmissive to everyone, including the spouse. All too often slave-driven parents are either authoritarian parents or grooming for sex parents and sometimes both. The parent or parents does the demon stare while verbally cursing and physically beating a child or children. They may even use alcohol or drugs before or after the beatings. The main objective is to make a slave out of the child or children. Afterward, the child or children are given a long list of tasks to do. Submissive mothers who limit drugs and violence guide their kids fairly and responsibly. While non-submissive mothers who abuse their kids around sex and violence create slave developments and patterns with their kids. It teaches them to accept drugs, violence, and other forms of enslavement. As if anything righteous will ever come out of living to die for those items. This occurs in homes where fathers and mothers are present or the mother is present and the father isn't. But, it is more common in homes where mothers are present and fathers are not. A slave child is being taught they don't need to overcome trauma, while the bond child is being taught to overcome to reign victoriously. Anyone can be in bondage, but it is highly recommended you allow the bond of God, separate you from the slavery bondage of desires and lusts of the world. Supportive parents. Supportive parents also act upon authoritative concepts and principles, with absolute favoritism of obedience and submission to one's authority. A supportive parent provides comfortable housing, encouragement, financial support, further education, health supplies, love, proper guidance, and sympathy for their kids. They acknowledge to teach them to be a loving and kind person towards others. They maintain the RDAs for their child or children which can stabilize their mental and physical growth to make them feel and look healthy. They acknowledge repeating those steps until each child reaches full development. Supportive parents are well informed about educational ideas, so they contribute support toward the children's educational activities while making sure they get a good quality of education and follow instructions in school. They teach the children what they are to know the following grade, embrace the children's achievements and communication skills, and research educational topics for the current grade. A supportive parent buys books or takes the children to the local library to review and study. Educational academics, athletic, classroom, or course of study work that includes, homework for activities requirements, development, materials, practice, projects, research, etc. Supportive parents acknowledge what being a grateful person means, so they show empathy, tell truths, and are compassionate toward others in times of need. They avoid being dogmatic toward their kids, by admitting faults, and avoid being overly confident and opinionated for arrogance or greed. And they acknowledge avoiding passing aggressive anger onto their kids. In which, their kids face fears and overcome challenges by the grace of God. In any case, supportive parents act as a protective shield to keep evil spirits away from babies and children. And they don't allow ancestral demons to control, influence, or instigate life with traditions that are disturbing, unfavorable, and unbearable to live by. They are very careful with whom they leave their children such as babysitters, daycare centers, schools, etc. And they watch for children in their care, and they never let them out of their sight. Those things can enable them to value inner strength, and being accountable for their actions with self-awareness. With supportive parents, the kids form effortless behavior, something you can't buy nor replace. They tend to set goals to remain focused and acknowledge giving God the glory. This kind of supportive parent is rare in our society, but no one is perfect and we all have fallen from grace. Unsupportive parents. Unsupportive parents too act upon authoritative concepts and principles, with absolute favoritism toward obedience and submission for one's authority. Either they are parents who have abandoned their kids and aren't supportive. Or they are grooming for sex parents and aren't supportive. Or they are slave-driven parents and aren't supportive but are demanding. Often the grooming for sex parents are also slave-driven parents that carry both mentalities, and either way, they are unsubmissive towards anyone. For the most part, they don't support their kids in something that will get them ahead in life. They don't teach the kids anything that will benefit them, nor do they protect them from harm's way. They are the parent the teacher has to keep calling to ask, will they come to the parent and teacher conference. And generally, they often are too drunk or high on dope to come. Some may work, if they aren't working, they make excuses. In the family structure, there is unrequired communication, so no goals are accomplished, no achievements are required, and needs go unmet. But generally, most unsupportive parents are raised by unsupportive parents or people. Children confused and abandoning paths. Too often, evil spirits they associate with, the same semantics plays out, and it is all about sex. Adults who have experienced the grooming for sex patterns, tend to use the baiting through guilt tactics. A parent may use the child or children's sex to remain in a marriage or to keep a spouse. 
An adopted parent or step-parent may use the child or children's sex to get things needed around the house or to advance in life. Afterward, what tends to happen is the parent may sabotage if the child or children doesn't want to play along with the semantics. Whereas the parent withholds allowances or advancements, and may even repeatedly judge them for circumstances where they had very little control. Even if, the parent's sabotage prevented a better outcome whether they deny it or not. Grooming a child to be used for sex can bring stress upon them once they realize the sex barriers were aimed at targeting their sex. Most times the parent, adopted parent, or step-parent be wanting to dominate the child or children's life. If either is the case, it isn't any better than grooming for a sex parent or a sex predator, who lures children for sex. Any of those parent types can appear dogmatic and overbearing believing sex justifies entitlements as a child. The child or children may abandon paths in life, believing you become unfruitful in lands where such affliction takes place, and every decision is justified based upon sex barrier struggles. Because as a result, the adult or parent has formed a platform for evil spirits to destroy and ruin their life. These reoccurring events can make anyone feel defenseless, enslaved, vulnerable, and weak. Generally, most parents who have forced their child or children into abandoning paths don't want to be held accountable for their actions and will go out of the way to cover up by sugarcoating the semantics. In which, they advocate being an adult of mystery or remaining in a childlike nature. But, you cannot want things done your way without acknowledging respect, responsibility, and trust. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Psalm 37 23, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8 28, God will allow you to be fruitful in the lands of your afflictions. Genesis 41 52, all parenting types act upon authoritative concepts and principles, with absolute favoritism toward obedience and submission for one's authority. Each parenting type has things they value more than life itself, all any parent can do is do better, and avoid passing bad behavior onto the kids. Sugarcoating the semantics of sex barriers. The ability to cover something devastating or difficult with sugar slash words is for it to appear more acceptable or pleasant. This is sugarcoating bad news, and covering up anything can lead to lying. Parents will deny or sugarcoat circumstances and events surrounding a child's upbringing mostly when the child has been groomed for sex. You can see this immensely in the rise of mental illness, so we don't need to pretend it doesn't happen, it happens all too often. Either they say oh, it didn't happen that way, or oh you don't even know exactly what happened. This is twisting the child's experience and then giving your own. And most kids who have been molested start to wonder, whose side are you on? This too is a part of the semantics kids experience when they have been sexually violated. Is it wrong to sugarcoat harsh or traumatic experiences? According to Sunday school teachers which are authoritative figures, you are to tell your story as it relates to the Bible to be fair and bear truths. In general, no one ought to twist your experience, this would be a second-hand and unfair experience, and not coming from the horse's mouth. So, to avoid sugarcoating bad news give a fair and true analysis of any news. We people need to bear truths and face fears of bad news to not play along with the semantics. Hate in the world. Most hatred is formed through backstabbing, betrayal, deceit, envy, revenge, selfishness, slander, and even strife activities. All this means there are a lot of unforgiving people. More importantly, boundaries don't get established enough in areas you need them most, and too many boundaries are established in areas you need them less. It is a shame people have been on the planet for over 400,000 years and still, evil hearts rule the final assignment Jesus gave us as followers. Being in bondage to the evil spirit's influences has fewer people believing in a God can supply all needs. However formally, socially, traditionally, and day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, second by second, forgiveness and righteousness conquers hate. 